inventory grab as this happened. And from this point forward, what have we had? At this point, you know, tracking cumulative delta, we could see, hey, this market moves so far to one extreme that it enticed anybody of any significant position sizing that was trying to hang on to some long inventory to bail and leave the market. Well, the only way you can tell what's going on uh, with the order flow distribution and can even see those type of events taking place on a day-to-day -day basis is you have to be using cumulative delta. You can't see that information looking at price only. Uh, what do we have today? Markets trading up, had a gap up, trading to new higher pricing levels than yesterday. What have I been doing? I've been selling the DAX on all these rotations. Why? Because the market is still holding short inventory as I have indexed by this level from a previous day uh, from, uh, from this area price. So the market's above that area where it was before, but yet sellers, most likely commercials, are still willing and they've held up to, uh, you know, what was it, about 10,000 contracts they're still holding. So cumulative delta is the only way I've been able to find to have some abil ability to pay attention to what the larger participants are doing. And in a sense, I'm using cumulative delta as a proxy to track the open interest on the day. And that's important information because tracking kind of the overall open interest situation on the day uh, is what's going to give you some of these very uh, robust supply and demand uh, based setups. So using cumulative delta uh, and cumulative delta is real simple. Cumulative delta is a parsed volume study. We are only paying att attention to the difference between those getting into or out of the market uh, at the bid or ask with market or orders. And that's the key. We're only paying attention to the market order driven order flow that's coming in at the bid or ask. And I always say that that's the volume of, of the total volume that market driven order flow is the volume that has conviction. Uh, those that are getting into and out of the market want to get in or out of the market right now more so than they want to put a target or, or put a position and wait for price to come and fill them with a limit order. So, so market driven order flow has more conviction to it. And the other key reason, highly uh, important reason why, why I want to track cumulative delta is over 70% of the commercials order flow in most all of these markets where they participate is conducted with market orders at the bid or ask as they cover positions, as they enter newly initiated positions, as they panic and capitulate out of positions, as the market's racing to areas where they've built up inventory before. Commercials, the predominance of their inventory is with market orders. So if I wanna see that market order driven order flow, I've gotta be tracking cumulative delta. It's just a must. You can't look at total volume and see what we're seeing uh, in the uh, market-driven order flow. And commercials love market-driven order flow because commercials can enter their positions in a highly sophisticated way with algorithmic automated entry programs that can actually interject you know, over 900 contracts into the market uh, with market orders in one second period of time. So do you think commercials can better mask their uh, entry and exit from the market by leaving their orders resting in the queue and the order book uh, as a limit order? Or can they hide what they're doing better by jumping in and out of the market as they trade around core positions with market orders? Obviously, they can mask their activities by far the best with market-driven order flow. So in the end, that's why uh, I pay attention to cumulative, cumulative delta and why I found the patterns within the uh, delta volume distributions. I've been able to find patterns and it's just basically I'm just fi I'm finding patterns of the play out of the supply and demand on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, the reason too, why did I 